It's fair to say that 2017 hasn't been the most exciting year for new anime. I have enjoyed a number of shows, but nothing I would consider to be a year's best work. Thankfully, the fall season is just starting, and there's a handful of shows that I'm really excited to check out. Fall is generally one of the stronger seasons in the year, so I'm going to have a look at a number of the season's shows and put together a list of five anime from fall 2017 that are worth watching. The first series I watched was Kino's Journey. Some of you might already be aware of the original series, which is a personal favourite of mine. It follows a pair of travellers as they visit different cities that all have distinct values. The story explores these values with each episode, considering human nature and our own society. The original was very well put together with a really unique, melancholic atmosphere. But this one isn't a sequel or anything, more so a reimagining, so I'm interested to check it out. And thankfully, the first episode was really strong. Kino visited a town where murder wasn't illegal. The build-up suggests that it would be an insane wild west town, but it wasn't. Instead, people used their ability to murder to instill order and peace. It turned out that when given the choice to kill, most people just don't. The stories are presented as classic philosophical questions, using discussion and basic examples to present an idea. Like the first episode, Kino discusses the concept with a number of different people, all with different viewpoints. Then we're given an example of how the idea would be put into practice, with firstly the discussion with the shopkeeper and then the murder at the end. Kino then summarises his discoveries in a alludes to possible conclusions. This is the kind of structure Kino's journey follows. It's not trying to tell the most heartwarming story or showcase the most realistic characters, it's trying to explore fundamental questions about society. Where the series loses out on relatability and realism, it gains in unique storylines and perspectives. The visuals are probably one of the biggest changes from the original and the area I'm most worried about. The series has drifted from the absolute simplicity of the older series, using instead a more modern, refined style. There's a lot of detail and fine line work that is quite a new addition. There's also the implementation of CG that in some scenes is quite jarring. I think this new style maybe takes away from the elusive atmosphere. That being said, the episode was directed fantastically. The town is shot in this eerie, artificial way. It really reminds me of the TV series Westworld. The highlight has to be the action scene at the end. There were so many perspective shots that kept me on the edge of my seat. And the story was spot on. It was well structured with very few moments that fell out of place. It considered its themes in a way that stays true to the essence of the series, but doesn't come across too preachy. I don't think everyone's going to like this series. It's going to be missing elements that some people will consider essential for a story. But for those that like Kino's approach to narrative, narratives, this will be a real gem. It's definitely the first on my list of shows to check out this season. Mahotsukai no Yome was the next series I checked out. This has had an interesting release. Some of the episodes were previewed in the summer season at events and theatres, but it's only now available to the public. It's a unique fantasy series that I think will have a love-hate reaction from the community. The first half of the episode is hit or miss, to be honest. The story stays very secretive, and some moments are quite creepy. It opens up with a really well-shot sequence that seems to be a girl being sold at an auction. The story references a lot of events that we're not aware of yet, and we don't know why or how she's being sold. It looks like the story could get really dark, but the story shifts as they return to this mysterious character's house. It introduces a fantasy world of magic and mythical creatures. I wasn't sure about the series up until this point, where the tone switches and the characters open up. We even have some light-hearted comedic moments that seemed a million miles away ten minutes ago. Even now, I'm not completely sure what kind of story this is going to be, but the characters are already intriguing. One of the best aspects of the episode was the sublime background art, done by a studio named Bamboo, who've already worked in a number of series and have a really impressive portfolio. The backgrounds lured me into this mysterious world with their immense detail and beautiful composition. Aspects like lighting were used fantastically to create a really immersive fantasy setting. It's hard to say who I'd recommend this to specifically, since we know so little about the story dynamic, but it was a very attention-grabbing first episode. Some of the elements were fantastic, and the finale scene was breathtaking. You're gonna have to make this one the second entry on my list. Black Clover was next, and with Boku no Hero's recent episodes really impressing me, I was open to another battle shounen. Unfortunately, Black Clover didn't scratch that itch, instead, it made it worse. It opens up by introducing our main character, which might be one of the most annoying protagonists I've ever seen. His voice actor does nothing but scream his dialogue, which is little more than a collection of cliché hero phrases. And this isn't helped by the abysmal written dialogue of the supporting cast, with moments like the priest entering a scene and arbitrarily blurting out a plot point for no apparent reason. 
The more and more it went on, the more and more it felt like some kind of battle shown in fan fiction. None of the happenings on screen seemed to relate to each other, things just seemed to happen without any effect or purpose. The episode manages to pull itself together for a short period during the middle as it introduces its premise, but this is rudely interrupted by possibly one of the worst villains I've seen in an anime for ages. Again, it's like I'm watching a 15 year old's Naruto fan fiction, which might even be an insult to 15 year old Naruto fans. Our protagonist continues to screech out taglines like some kind of soundboard, and then the episode finally does something right and ends. I wasn't expecting to be blown away by Black Clover, but I wasn't expecting it to be that bad. It has no self-awareness and seemingly no grasp of storytelling. I might check out a few more episodes out of sheer curiosity, but I don't know who would enjoy this, so it's definitely not making it onto my list. I was hoping the next series wouldn't be as disappointing, Shoujo Shumatsu Ryoko, and what a nice surprise it was, exactly what I needed after Black Clover. It's an interesting little story that follows two characters as they explore a seemingly abandoned world, destroyed by an unnamed war. The characters seem just as clued up as us about what's happening in their world, which makes all the little discoveries they make exciting. It seems to be structured similarly to Kino's journey as the characters have a basic philosophical approach to everything they encounter, questioning topics without the pre-established values of society. And much like last season's Made in Abyss, there is a fantastic sense of mystery. From the first episode, I might even prefer Shimatsu. The expansive, abandoned battlefield they explore is visually dull with no colour or warmth, but there's so much to read into, with every little detail hinting towards what might have happened. I think the episode's atmosphere was topped only by the fantastic episode direction. This is Takaharu Ozaki's first time directing a full project, and he's off to a fantastic start. He uses perspective shots in a way that I've very rarely seen in animation, as if he's attached cameras to objects in the world. This perspective shot of a bullet flying out a gun, or in this scene where a camera overshoots its shot as the characters are playing around on a plane propeller, these are both great examples. His framing and slow paced camera movements give the whole episode a mysterious undertone. Ozaki's style is certainly unconventional, and it's hard to see how the episode would have held up without it. I'm extremely interested to see where they take this series, both visually and thematically. I really like the duo's naive outlook on topics of war, and I'm hoping they build on that. Without a doubt, the next on my list of shows. And the next series I'm checking out couldn't be further from Shumatsu, Junai Tessen, a harsh, fast-paced action series showcasing 12 mystery characters in a last man standing situation, where they essentially just run around trying to destroy each other. I was so conflicted as to if I wanted to add this to my list or not. On one hand, the raw action and brutality of the series is right up my alley, but halfway through the episode the show got a bit bogged down with the backstory. A little bit is fine, but for a show that's so ridiculously violent it's hard to care about the little details of the subplot. It can't take itself too seriously when one character is a machete wielding bunny man. Thankfully the episode ends well by disregarding any more backstory and just jumping into the action. If the series is just characters fighting from now till the end, I'd probably be quite happy. The story doesn't need much depth to be successful, its strengths seem to lie in finding creative ways to be brutal, and sometimes that's fine. The strong point of the episode would have to be the visual presentation, specifically the animation. Every second of animation in this episode was fantastically put together, with seemingly never-ending fast-paced variation. It made it a thrill to watch, and the unique character designs all drawn with a sketchy art style kept everything fresh. This obviously isn't going to be for everyone, and it won't go down in the history books. It's a bit of a novelty series, and could quite possibly fall apart at any moment, but personally, I really enjoyed the first episode and already want to see the next. Any show that does that has to be doing something right. I'm going to add it to my list. The next series I watched was Children of the Whales. I went into it completely blind, and it's quite possibly my favourite of the season so far. It tells the story of Chakuro, a boy that archives the happenings of a floating mud turtle. Sounds good already. It uses his writings of a specific adventure to show us a beautiful fantasy world. I don't want to describe any details about the world or the story because having it unravel before you is one of the show's strongest aspects. I love how they've chosen to tell the story. Our main character is a scribe, someone who records events, and it's a telling of his perspective mixed with real-time dialogue. This gives the story a fairy tale feeling, which is helped by the psychedelic imagery and the paper effect on the background art. The world of Children of the Waves is brought to life with a similar level of creativity, having a floating town that sails on a sea of sand. It's like something from an ancient folk tale. The highlight of the episode was of course the production, specifically the art direction, which is fronted by industry veteran Toshiharu Mizutani. He's worked on some of Dezaki's classics like Aim for the Ace and Space Adventure Cobra. He worked as art director on a key era and has even done some modern classics like Summer Wars. He's got a lot under his belt, and it really shines through here. Not only the fantastic design of each scene, but the 
way in which it's all presented, the sense of scale in the shots of the floating town or the mystery evoked by the abandoned settlements. The episode was a real change from a lot of seasonal anime this year, it felt completely new, not just someone's take on an already established concept. And because of this, I'm extremely interested to see what kind of story they choose to tell. Will it lean on the episodic side to focus on character narratives, or will it open up to an overarching story? Who knows, but I'm really excited to see what's next. Which fills up our list. Firstly, we had the really solid episode of Kino's Journey, then the haunting Mahutsuka. After that, we had the delightful Shumatsu, then Junai Tyson, and finally, the wonderful Children of the Whales, a real mixture of genres and styles. I'm not sure if all these shows will stand the test of time and be equally as exciting come the end of the season, Season, but it's a good starting point, and I want to hear your opinions about the shows I've mentioned, and maybe even some I still need to check out. Post your thoughts in the comments. I'll be keeping up with all these shows, so expect another video at the end of the season. And if you want more, you can follow me on Twitter for more regular updates. And if you enjoyed this video, please do click the like button and share it around. Thank you very much for watching.